Welcome to the show, Susan. How are you doing over there? I'm great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again for being here, Susan. Um, first thing I always like to ask our guests here is just a bit about themselves, kind of how your journey started. I feel like students um, kind of expect to graduate and end up in their dream career, but it's almost mm -hmm. never the case. It's always sort of a journey to getting to that point. So are there any highlights kind of in your journey that um, you can share with us today about how you got where you are today? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, first of all, I was very late getting into teaching. Um, it's kind of my, you know, I will call it my my sundown career. Um, I, I have done many things uh, previous to this. Uh, I w went to university and out of university, literally, um, I, I just went into the work world. Okay, so I was working in administration, um, not specifically in any given field because I jumped around a little bit. I was, um, I've been everything from a veterinary assistant Assistant, which I did that for years. And um, then I had an opportunity to go into sales. This okay. was through family friend. And um, I spent 15 plus years uh, as an independent sales rep um, in an industry where I learned a lot about business, business communication, which is funny, what I teach right now, uh, business communication, sales, pres present, or sorry, uh, presentations. Right. And um, it just kind of grew from there. So I was in an industry that um, when the economy changed, it really impacted my business. And I wasn't really sure what direction I might go in from there. I ended up having an opportunity to go back to school. So as a mature woman, I went back to school. That's awesome. And um, wow. focused in on business. And from there, between networking, experience, education, I had someone ask me, had I ever thought about teaching? Huh. And I was, me? <laughs> so uh, we had a discussion. I put together a resume. And... From there, uh, it was about three or four weeks later, I had an interview and I had a teaching job. That's unbelievable, Susan. I had a teaching job, an opportunity to teach what I knew from a, not only from an academic, um, you know, I, I had the piece of paper, right. but from what I was passionate about that I knew the details firsthand. And, and that's, that's where I've been able to connect with students because I'm just not, um, it's just not from a textbook. It's from real life experience. And it was a crazy journey. I, I had no idea I would end up here. Um, and I love it. I absolutely love what I do. That is such a cool story, Susan. And I, I feel like it's, um, helpful for students to hear that, that, you know, you can do something early in your career that ends up playing a huge role um, in what you end up doing later. And, um, you know, my pa has a similar story. He grew up doing martial arts and never thought of it as something he would use as a career. And, and 20 years later, ended up opening a studio, like a, a an academy based on uh -huh. that. Um, I always find that helpful to hear because I think our interests change, you know, as our experience. Well, our interests change, our opportunities change. Economy impacted my business right. that I, I was working three times as hard for less money. And I was very successful previous to the economy changing. Right. I just didn't really know how to navigate. I really felt for a small, I'm a very positive person. I think, you know, things come in our path that we're not always ready for. And it's can be, it can feel uncomfortable. Okay. However, I am very positive And I thought, well, what can I do with this? Like, and you don't know, where you're going to land, but you also don't know the opportunities that will be presented to you. I never thought about the the idea of teaching what it was that I was passionate about. It was a little bit scary. And 
I just, I found my groove. I mean, it's kind of like my sales career because I'm selling um, practical ideas that will help my students get a job, be successful in that job. Um, business communication really is, it's, it's my jam and I get to, I get to share it with people passionately. Well, that's a lucky group of students there uh, because like you said, you're bringing those insights from having done what they're hoping to do. So I think it's pretty rare to have someone from industry get to be uh, a teacher. I think that's incredibly uh, lucky. I, I'm sure your students feel that way. Well, uh, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I try and I try and make it I try and make it real world relative. That's really my goal. And, and that's where kind of my next question comes from is I think a lot of students start wondering around graduation, you know, yes, they can go to the job boards to look for opportunities, but how else can they find some opportunities? And it's interesting you say that by kind of going back to school and meeting people, someone kind of noticed you have this skill set and went, hey, have you thought about doing this? So for, you know, the students you've worked with recently, have you noticed any any trends in kind of where these opportunities come from? Is it from them kind of networking with each other? Is it talking to other professors or do you have? Well, any I think um, I really try. I have students from first year um, certificate programs right up to third year um, diploma programs. And whether they are just about to graduate after successfully navigating a three year program, or whether they're in their first year or even first or second semester of a program, I, I have them look forward. I really want them to know that there's an opportunity to network with people, whether it be your classmates, friends and family of, of their parents or their neighbors, that I, I feel so um, fortunate to be with Seneca because Seneca offers um, such great uh, career services. And their career Absolutely. services, they have great career fairs. Um, they have opportunities for students to reach out and connect with industry. And I'm always promoting whatever Seneca is offering to the students. I have uh, career services offers um, cover letter and um, resume writing. I encourage the students to help themselves, right? They are responsible for, um, to reach out, to learn how to be well-spoken, to learn how to introduce themselves, to pique the interest of possible opportunities. So classmates, professors, activities on campus, uh, industry associations, connect with them. I do teach a class next week is all about LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn profile, how to how to create that, how to use it, how to utilize it, okay? How to connect with people properly, respectfully um, within your industry to, you know, I tell two people, they tell two people, it grows exponentially. Well, you have to make the first step. And sometimes it's just sharing with the students what opportunities are available to them that actually fires up their passion to move forward or step out of their comfort zone, right? Because stepping out of your comfort zone allows more opportunities to come your way. That makes a lot of sense. And it's a practical thing I think students can do. So you've given me a couple of new questions here now. Do do you find students reach out to you? I mean, if I was a student, I know you come from industry and have worked, you know, successfully in, in quite a few different fields. I would be inclined to ask you, hey, you know, these are some of the things I'm interested. Is there any chance you know someone I can speak to? Is that something that students do uh, with you? Is it something you recommend that they reach out to professors for? Or is that maybe not the way to go about it? Well, uh... It depends on the, it, perf it would definitely depend on the subject that you're teaching. I have students reach out to me 
with reference to cover letters and resumes. Okay. I always say if you would like, first of all, I always let all students know what's available to them through Seneca. Okay. Our career de our um, career support department is fabulous. hundred percent. We have um, job boards and connections and job fairs, and these are all opportunities. I highlight them in my blackboard for students. So even if it has nothing to do, I if there's something available, I want them to attend. You don't even have to speak to anybody if you're not comfortable yet, but you're exposing yourself to it. So yeah. give it a try. Ask a classmate, would you like to come with me? Let's go together. There's baby steps sometimes. And some people are just like right in there. They're like, I can seize this opportunity. What I end up more often helping students with is uh, feedback on cover letters and resumes. Though the courses I'm teaching right now, we don't focus on that, but we do have a job search element to my first year course. Um, but I always say, I'm available if you if you were going for a job interview and you'd like me to look at something, please ask me. Even after I'm not your teacher anymore, you can always reach out to me. Um, and I've had lots of lots of students do that. That is um, that is really helpful advice as well, Susan. One thing that really stuck out to me just in um, what you're saying there is that there are these baby steps to take. I think a lot of times students hear about a career fair and they go. Oh, that's going to be overwhelming. Yeah. And just saying, hey, you can just go there, you know, the first time and just be there. You don't have to talk. Just to observe. Anybody. Observe. Yeah, yeah for such, sure. A, that's such a tangible, you know, step that students who are nervous can take. And then eventually, you know, you'll start, I think, talking to the employers you're interested in. And at that stage, do you have advice on what to do at that point? You know, a, a, Seneca has these incredible opportunities. The Seneca Works team is amazing. They bring in all these employers, but suddenly now you're a student at the career fair. There's 20, 30, 40 different employers there that all sound great. Um, do you have advice to students on how to stand out when you get to that opportunity? Absolutely. I teach in, in the course I teach. I teach how to create an, what we call an elevator speech or a personal commercial. Oh, I encourage okay. students to actually write, uh, research, write, edit, and rehearse an elevator speech. So I want you to, I get them to list, um, what are your skills? What are your goals for your career? Think, think about your goals when you, at the idea of graduating, then think, You've, you've got your first job. What are your goals for the next five years? Okay, where do you see yourself in five years? So if you, you start by making a list of your soft skills and your hard skills, of course, I've taught them what those things are. Make a list for you. Your introduction, how to, how to approach someone professionally. You use the word hello, you don't use the word hi. <laughs> You introduce yourself. You sh you put out your hand to shake, though not everybody shakes hands. I teach them if someone doesn't how to keep eye contact with a smile. Put your hand down. So the actual step by step, your first name. Talk to them about your education. What skills do you have that you believe you can bring to an employer? Tell them what your goals are. And always remember to thank whoever it is that you're speaking to. Make an impression. But if you prepare an elevator speech or a personal commercial, it's 30 to 60 seconds. Uh, it's, it's not, a, you don't have to remember a lot. You just have to remember education, skills, goals, thank you. If you can just write it out, have someone look at it to give you some feedback and then practice it. Practice it in the mirror. Record yourself. Practice it with a fellow student, a family member. Just so when you are presented with an opportunity, you've you've now got this introduction that who's ever on the end, other end of that introduction is like, oh, impressive. 
I could maybe see them working with our team or I'm interested in passing on um, that information or that resume to the hiring manager. So first impressions, right? Yeah. And it's it can feel very intimidating, but the more you practice it and you only have to do it one or two times and you're like, hey, I got this. Elevator pitches. Who are you? What do you want? What do you offer an employer? That's you another, need to be able to speak up for yourself. That's another great one, Susan. And it's it's like you said, you know, it, it doesn't take um a ton of attempts to start getting comfortable with it one or one or two times. And I I agree, you immediately start to feel like, okay, I kind of I kind of get what I'm doing here. Um one thing I think students are get a little um overwhelmed by as well at these events is that there are so many employers there. So do you have any advice around <laughs> focusing on, you know, a select few that you really want to talk to, or do you see an advantage in trying to speak to many of them? Because kind of, you know, we don't know what each opportunity might entail. Any guidance around that? Okay. So that kind of, I have a, a answer A and answer B. Okay. So first of all, I will say that some of my students really do know who they want to work with or for. OK, and hard. I say, OK, anytime you have an opportunity. So whether you're going to a networking event, if you know that that company is going to be there, how prepared are you to talk to them? What right. research have you done? OK, even if you've been called your resumes, you've put out all these resumes and you have an opportunity for an interview. The very first thing you do is you do your research on the company. There's a couple of reasons for that. One, it will have you better prepared to answer questions in an interview, like why did you apply for this position? Is there, you know, uh, why would you like to work for this company? What do you know about our company? Right. The more you know about the company, the more articulately and intelligently you can respond to these questions. It also shows a hiring um uh, I'm sorry, the interviewer, um, your interest, you know a lot about them, you know who their competitors are, um, what their successes are, um, where they stand in the industry with corporate social responsibility or integrity, have they been in the news lately? Right. One, after you've done the research, do you still want to work for them? So true. Have it piqued your interest or you have you said, well, I don't think that's going to be a good fit. That doesn't align with my values or whatever it is. Then you're also prepared. So maybe you want to find out who's going to be there. Which ones are you interested in? Do some research. Be prepared that when you have an opportunity. So two things. One, if you don't know anybody in the industry, you go and you you just feel it out the first time. The next time you go, you will, hmm, I, I've researched these three because they're the ones I'm most interested in. Right. So when you have an opportunity to say, hi, I'm Susan Hayes, continue with your introduction, you can now speak to that uh, positions in their company. That makes a lot of sense. And I think that research is so critical because it- Oh, Absolutely. It it's if, if someone goes to an interview and they they don't know um, about the company, again, their products, their services, uh, their leadership style, their mission statement, their who do they connect with in the community? Um, again, one, it's do you really want to work there? Because you should ask that question of yourself. Are you still interested in this company? Don't waste your time. Bye bye next. Okay, move on. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's so true. And I, I don't know if students um realize that till much later that it is it's a two way process, right? It's do you actually want to work there? Um, and that does take research. Uh now let's say that you know things have gone well, you found the company that you want to work at, you make that great elevator pitch impression, and you do get the opportunity to interview with a hiring manager or someone from HR. Have you noticed anything that kind of red flags or stops a student at the interview process? Anything that we should avoid doing in an interview? Does anything like that come to mind for you? 
Yeah. Avoid not being prepared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. True. Never go to an interview, not prepared. Right. So um, in my, I teach interpersonal skills. Part of this is a job search element to our semester. The thing is, you should already know the answer, the answers to probably the top 20 interview questions. You should already know how you're going to respond. Right. So a student not only does research on the company, but they look at the top 20 interview questions for that industry. You can do the Google on that. Okay. My students laugh when I say that, the Google. I, I, I only say it for a laugh. I know it's not the Google. The thing is, the thing is um, do, that's part of preparing for a job interview. So what, tell me a time you had to deal with um, a difficult coworker. You should already have an example ready for them. You should already know that you should be responding using the STAR approach, which is situation, task, action, result. If you write out, take those 20, whichever 20 you find, write out your own answers. Then you want to edit it. You want to, so I always say, research, write, edit, rehearse. OK, the thing is, if you've got that, you can now file it back here. You just file those answers back the night before your interview. You're just going to review them. You're going to walk into that interview and whatever question comes your way, you have 20 reserve answers that you have prepared for that you can then, even if the question is not specific, you can take one of these because you know them so well and you can tweak it just for that specific question. You've got the um, the situations or the examples because an, a hiring person is looking for you to provide evidence of your, yes, I can do this. Or, And I always say to students, what if they ask you a question and you've never had that experience? Do you just that. answer no? Yeah. I've yeah. never had that happen. No, you don't. Because they're looking for you to share what strategies either you did use because you did have the experience, or they're looking for the strategies that you would implement if you were in that situation. Uh, so you would respond with, I've actually never had that experience. What a great question. But if I ever found myself in a position like that, I would stay calm. I would ask questions. I would, whatever you would do, because they're really looking at critical thinking skills, your emotional intelligence, what strategies you would put in place to handle whatever situation they've given you. That is really helpful because I hear students ask that all the time. What would I say if I haven't had that experience before? And you say, that's a really great question. I've never had that experience. Right. However, I believe if I had an angry customer in front of me, I would stay calm. I would ask questions. I would assure them that I'm there to help them. What would you do? So you share. They're looking for someone to um, share their strategies. So it's either strategies you did use or strategies you would use in that situation. That's super helpful. I feel like that's easy to remember, too. So that's going to be one I think students can keep in the back of their minds. Um, another question I hear in the same kind of vein as this is, what about for students who don't have work experience yet? Can they use examples of times they've done some of these things in class is it all right to draw on school absolutely absolutely it doesn't have to be work related i have many students who have no work experience whatsoever so they're like well how am i going to create a resume i i have no i have just my program and i'm not even done my program okay right. so 
It's amazing how a conversation with a student can lead to experiences they have had in the past. And what I do when they share those experiences is I'm able to draw attention to skills that they used to manage or complete any of the things that they're sharing with me. Oh, well, that sounds like you were very organized. Uh. You had to collaborate with your sports team in order to um, implement the play to um, meet that success. Okay, so you do have good organizational skills. You do have good time management skills. You work well independently. Look at how well you've done in your courses. You work well in a collaborative uh, situation because you work on a team or you've volunteered for this over here or you had these successes. I always tell my students, don't talk about high school. Right. You can, but you don't say, in high school, I, you could say in a group, um, in a group project, I held the leadership program. You don't have to tell them it was in high school. Right. You're not fudging. You're not making things. You're just not telling them it was in high school, but you're talking about a skill or an experience that you have just right. Don't mention it was back then. They can assume it's from now. Okay. So I have helped, I have helped teenagers that are still in junior high and high school create resumes, and I can get a page out of it. That again is because we don't realize we have a ton of skills. If you are a dog walker in a neighborhood, time timeline, you you um you are organized. You are responsible. You um, you are on time. You are punctual. There's a lot of things you can pull out from everyday activities. That's um, I think again, just so hopefully relieving to hear as a student that there are all these everyday experiences that you can draw skills out of. And I really like the sports team example. Uh, Susan, because I think that really highlights you can be just doing the things you enjoy, like playing a sport yeah. and pull out collaboration, leadership, organization, time management, and really put that into the context of the job you're talking about. Um, I don't think students necessarily recognize that until they have a conversation with someone like yourself. So uh, absolutely, absolutely, because they feel like they don't have enough to offer. And it just takes a conversation. And some students just don't. And the conversation then tells them to start looking for those things in the in activities or accomplishments that they have in the future. It just takes something to go to look at something differently, right? Yeah, that's so helpful. I think that's going to give many students a, a chance to rethink how they write their resumes and present themselves even just as they choose those stories as well, what they draw on becomes so much broader. Um, so I, know I have, I have students, whoops. I have students who are straight out of high school. Mm -hmm. um, have come from other countries. Mm -hmm. So language is an issue. Right. I have uh, students who are mature, who have had successful careers in other countries, who have come and gone back to school to either get Canadian certified or to start a whole new career. Mm -hmm. So my students are from varied backgrounds, varied cultures. Um, and I learn something new from my students every single day by the questions that they ask, that the challenges that they perceive they have, some are real, some are based in, out of, are based in fear, and yeah. sometimes just having conversations and really letting a student know that there are endless opportunities out there for them. It just needs a little bit of practice to 
go in the right direction. So again, whether it be a high school student at 18 that is in their first or second semester at Seneca, or whether I'm hopefully motivating and encouraging um, a student uh, who has such vast experience, it's just fine tuning it, having them um, encouraging them to continue on their journey of you know, in improving their language skills, their written skills, their verbal skills. Um, you know, I love teaching students from other countries. What questions in an interview are inappropriate? Right. You know, you don't have to answer all those questions. Are you married? Do you have children? What? Oh, that's an interesting accent. Where are you from? No, in Canada, we can't ask these questions. Awesome. Okay, so I want them to know what to expect, how to prepare them. But I also want them to know that there are rules and regulations about respect and um, consideration and diversity and all of these things here in Canada. That's super helpful to know, Susan, as well. And I think one thing that I'll I'll highlight in, um, in a clip around this topic is just what you're saying, you know, that they have a lot to teach too. I think many times international students worry that they are lacking in some way for Canadian experience and forget the fact that they actually bring all this incredible international experience Absolutely. to the table. So I, I'm really glad you mentioned that. They really, really do. Um, you know, uh, I just find that most of my students are eager and positive and looking forward to a bright future. And I just want them to know that those opportunities are out there for them. There is a process, you know, you need a, a good resume, you need to have interpersonal skills to be able to communicate and create relationship with people. And that's that creating, I always say create relationship, I kind of use that as a, a learning tool. Everybody you meet, is an opportunity, hundred percent, an opportunity for a mentor, a friend, a coworker, all of these things, an opportunity for a job. Uh, so, how are you going to put yourself out there? That's uh, it's so true, and it kind of leads me to the last question I'll I'll ask you because I know we're pushing our time. I I asked you for today here, but. If you could uh, just maybe answer this last one here, it's kind of around opportunities you see in the future. Uh, you mentioned early on kind of how the economy changed the opportunities in the field, one of the fields you started in. Do you see any changes kind of forthcoming that um, may present opportunities for students? Do you see kind of anything on the horizon that maybe engineering students in particular should keep an eye out for? AI, make sure you're being, you are up on what's happening with artificial intelligence. Um, it's really going to, well, it has impacted the world. You know, we're, we're a year and a half into when this all craziness began. Yeah. It has its positive sides. It truly does. I want to teach. Um, I want to teach for the future. I don't want to just get stuck in, in, um, you know, I don't want to be always negative about AI. I really don't. It has certainly impacted education. Um, however, I hope my students realize that the authenticity of what is out there for AI is not always accurate. Right. And they need to be aware of um, how this impacts the choices that they make and how it impacts their jobs going forward. Um, yes, that's a- AI is going to be part of almost all careers going forward. Even if it's just to take over some of the mundane, um, automated things going forward, but you know, engineering students, accounting. I mean, I teach report writing. You can put a scenario into AI and get it out, but where did that content come from? Is it a valid source? It can't take over critical thinking skills. Okay. So um, just being aware. So the trends are AI impact in 
across almost all all industries. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but I believe that there are um, great opportunities. Making sure your online presence is accurate and appropriate for um, for success going forward. That's really helpful, Susan. And I, I think it kind of goes back to what you're saying. You know, if you do uh, do choose to use the Google, um, we kind of know inherently that you have to think critically about the topics you're you're researching and the sources of those informations. I think that's going to be, like you say, uh, as important as ever. And um, just want to thank you again for your time today, Susan. I, I really appreciate hearing these insights. My pleasure. My pleasure. Absolutely. And uh, I, I do hope students reach out to you and uh, the Seneca Works team to ask more of these questions and have these conversations with you, because uh, I think it's exciting to hear that a student may start a conversation like that thinking they don't bring much to the table and end up, you know, with at the very least a page of skills and um, experience that they do have to offer. So uh, that was a really cool insight. I like. And it's uh, about creating relationship. Maybe you don't have all of the things, but your um, ability to share your enthusiasm, your um, your education maybe that's what that employer is looking for. So they can teach you the other things, but they're looking for someone that will enhance their organization and add to their team that they already have in place. And maybe your personality is what's gonna get you the job, your interpersonal skills, your ability to share those skills with someone else. That's a that's again, just such an important note, especially in an engineering field and my background is in engineering and I've heard it time wow. and time again how much that um that does set you apart so uh thank you again for your time today Susan I know I kept you longer than expected but I think we'll have to have you back on I feel like we're just scratching the surface on <laughs> insights and advice from you so um you may see me sending you a message to ask if you'll come back in the future well uh you can reach out anytime thank you so much awesome have a great long weekend and I'll talk to you soon Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye, Susan.